Welcome to the Law, Your Money, and You. I'm Roberta Sapphire, an attorney in Sharon, Massachusetts. And I'm Camille <laughs> Barron, a financial organizer also in Sharon, Massachusetts. And Roberta, today we're going to be talking about options that people have for having vacations nearby and take advantage of some of their local resources. A lot of people today, of course, are watching their spending and may or may not be in a position to take a, a traveling type vacation, but there are many, many resources available in local communities. Yeah, not just in Sharon, but in all over the country. But today we're going to narrow into one particular state park, the Borderland State Park, and we have with us, and we're really very thrilled to, because there's so much information people don't know about, and you have it. We have Eleanor Simmons with us, and that's E L L E N O R E. Is that right? No E on the end. Oh, but, no E on the yeah, end. But thank oh. you for having me. That's oh, great. thank you for being here. And Camille said, oh, we have a police officer. It looked officer. like a policeman because you got your badge on. Yeah. But, no, uh, but you've been with Borderland for years. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what your position is and, and just keep talking unless we interrupt. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Um, I'm a 1978 graduate from Sharon High School. I grew up mm -hmm. in Sharon. I've been working at the state parks for 28 years and Borderland for the last um, 18. And I'm the park mm -hmm. supervisor. I was doing programs and publicity for a long time. and. Uh, girls in Science program, the Kid Lidoscope program, the Junior Ranger program. That a lot of kids in the area, um, they're 30 now, and they come up and say, hey, I was in your preschool program. Oh, so. oh, you, you know something? Tell us. I, I never knew about that part. I knew about the events because mm -hmm. my daughter got married there. Almost. That's why I thought you were there more than that. My daughter got married there 17 years mm -hmm. ago. Actually, 17 years ago, in a few days, you just yep. reminded me of her anniversary. And we used to have weddings there all the time from the yep. Sapphire Manor, now estate. And um, Eleanor was always wonderful. And they, you let them have the ceremony in front of the castle. Now, a lot of state parks don't have castles. Mm -hmm. Th this mm -hmm. is this is really a, a castle. But tell us about the the young kids program, the kaleidoscope. Well, we have a whole bunch of different programs uh, from usually from April to October for um, all different ages and we have a visitor services supervisor. His name is Paul and he does the kid lidoscope. It's for preschoolers. They're for two to six year olds and um, you can look on the um, Borderland Park website which is mass.gov slash DCR slash southeast slash <laughs> borderland but if you just go into the uh, state parks website you'll be able to find what's going on at the park so we have preschool programs we have hikes uh, we have mansion tours a, a lot of variety yeah last year you celebrated the centennial because uh, we we were there too mm -hmm. helping that was quite a uh, a big production it was we had a wonderful time um, it was the hundredth anniversary of the Ames mansion and uh, Blanche and Oaks Ames had lived there and built it in the year 1910. So they turned it into a state park in uh, 1972. Yeah, w and, wasn't yeah. it owned by their family the, yep. whole, the yep. whole time? It was the Blanche and Oaks Ames. They owned it till 1972 and then they turned it over to be a state park. Was that because they couldn't afford the taxes anymore? <laughs> no, um, the, the two, the Blanche and Oaks had passed away. Their four children were in their 60s, and they oh. really um, thought that it should become a public property for people, everybody in Massachusetts to enjoy. Well, besides being a state park, you know, it has a lot of history. Wasn't she an artist? Or mm -hmm. She was an artist, a uh, woman suffragette. She uh, worked for the women to have the right to vote. Uh, she was mama four. She also uh, was an inventor, and her husband Oakes. He was a oh. botany professor at Harvard. Oh, uh, what, what did she invent? She invented a hexagonal lumber cutter, and uh, a uh, apparatus that would make a certain string that would hang from airplanes to c c uh, that would hang from barrage balloons to cr wrap around airplane propellers during World War II and make them crash. So she had all sorts of and different a woman, things. A woman back in those days. Can you believe that? No, yeah. that's that's yeah. very unusual. 
Now, how big is the park and how many towns does it cover? Well, it oh, is in question. Sharon and Easton, mm -hmm. and it's uh, 1,773 acres. That's big. So it takes yeah. about um, an hour and a half to get from the main visitor center up to Moore Street in wow. Sharon, mm -hmm. and that's our northern end of the property, and then another hour to get to the southern end of the property, which is the Rockland, St Rockland Street in Easton. Mm -hmm. And we also have Stoughton and Mansfield on our perimeters. Oh, I was going to ask that. I, I remember for the Centennial, wasn't it a, a large group of towns? Yes, we, uh, we asked all our local towns to participate and, and uh, celebrate the Ames Mansion because so many people from our surrounding towns visit all the time. So, um, you know, we have over 200,000 people come a year to the park. And so we really enjoy having them, and we love to have people from different communities share the space. Don't they have fish? Do they have fishing, swimming, and boating in that particular we have. Um, we don't have swimming, but we do have fishing um, if you have your license. And we do have um, some boating. The ponds are so shallow that uh, mm -hmm. after Memorial Day and before Labor Day, it's sort of tough because we have so many lily pads. But oh. um, people can come and play uh, disc golf, have a picnic. Uh, ride their bike, uh, just walk, look around the gardens of the mansion, uh, and just uh, sit and read. Or some people, we have business people that come and sit up on the, put their laptop on the picnic table and do their work from the park. Oh, That's nice. interesting. Mm. Is there a charge to get in there? There's $2 charge per car. Um, and uh, if you ha buy an annual pass, it lets you in any state park in Massachusetts for the year. And that's oh, $35. That's so you can go to Horseneck Beach and Scusset Beach and Watson Pond, Mount Greylock out in Western Mass. So a lot um, of these beaches are, are really state parks. Yes. People yeah. wouldn't know that. The state the, reservation state do, beaches. There was one thing uh, you said, uh, disc golfing. I, I, I've never well, heard of that. Well, disc golf is, um, a disc is a, another name for Frisbee, and it's oh. a um, world-renowned um, sport, and there's leagues and there's people that... Um, are world champions, and we're our course is rated one of the highest uh, in the world for fun and beauty and really? uh, and uh, challenging. This so, is frisbee. Yeah, what it's like a frisbee. frisbee. It's called they disc call golf. Yeah. Wow. And it, if you throw the disc and the the hole, if you will, is like is a on basket the, right? on the tree. Uh, no, tree? it's on a right. um, special metal post. Oh, okay. With the basket, mm. but. Um, you know, it's just like regular golf. You have a par, and you have different clubs, which are actually different discs. Some are putters, some are drivers, some are long-range drivers. So. Interesting. You mean like yeah. that? No, like it's like throwing oh, a frisbee, fine. but yeah. That's, that's good. How, who plays it? Every, every just age? Just about every group? age. Um, mostly um, probably 20 to 40-year-olds. That's when the majority. But we see children out there, and families come and play. and. Um, this whoever wants to try we do have some loaner discs so if we're in the office we'll be happy to lend it out to anyone mm -hmm. and they can try it out are you there year-round um, the park is open every day mm -hmm. and I'm I'm been there year-round yes mm. we have two year-round staff that's nice because people tend to think of parks like that outdoor activities as summer only but that's not the case here I it, think it, there's a lot to offer a, a lot to offer all yeah, year round. Right. Yeah. Yeah. How about cross country skiing? Yeah, That's a better. lot of people use it when we have some snow. We had mm -hmm. some nice cross country skiing snow this past winter. Mm -hmm. um, we also have uh, people can come snowshoeing. Mm -hmm. We have the nice sledding hill behind the mansion that a lot of families enjoy. Mm -hmm. And you can go out looking for animal tracks and um, just just being outside in the in the winter weather is is pretty nice. You have nice gardens there too. All right, we do have the um, gardens around the Ames Mansion. The Friends of Borderland and the state just put um, some money into revamping the garden next to the mansion. So uh, we want to bring it back to around 1915 because it had been um, a little bit uh, grown in and different people had put plants in it. But we, well, right now, if you go down there, it's really exciting because it's changing. Oh, what are they taking plants we out? We took plants out last oh. fall, and we used put some back, and we're putting some new plants in that um, we think will fit what was there in 1915, plus a little less maintenance for the park staff. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I remember when the kids, you, you must have a lot of high school kids that go there for picnics. I, I remember. Yeah. We have uh, the cross countries yeah. team. That's the um, the Hockamock League. It's its home course for the cross country race teams, and uh, the uh, North e Easton uh, hosts it. And Sharon Easton Mansfield, they use it as a lot of times as their uh, cross country race uh, training area. How do you keep track of everything? It's <laughs> a lot of a lot of community action and it's great because you know I've I've been there quite a long time so I've made some good uh, friends as well as some nice uh, connections between the different communities. You know I want to tell our viewers when we first spoke to you about coming on the show I said what, what would you like to talk about? She, you says ask me anything. <laughs> ask me anything. I, I don't have to do research. I don't have to look up anything. Just ask me anything. I've lived it. I've loved it. You know, mm. just ask me, ask me anything. So well, I want to ask I'll do my you, best. Oh, you're doing great. What does Thank the you. badge say? Um, I'm a forest and park supervisor for the Commonwealth of Mass, mm. and my badge is number 51, so it's... Oh, okay. So. We'll know where to find you. That's right. Look for That's number right. 51. Yeah, yeah. How, many, how many badges are there? There's uh, probably about 100 in oh, the state parks, there. yeah. You know, one of the things that is a controversy in many towns across the country uh, is, is preserving the natural beauty of the town and places like borderland or other types of conservation land versus developing. And of course, there's always that balance between wanting to extend the tax base so that it's not too burdensome on residents mm -hmm. versus conserving and, and preserving the mm -hmm. beauty. Good point. Uh, do you have any insights on, on the value of keeping the conservation lands, keeping the parks alive and vibrant in a community? Well, um, the, just about every town in Massachusetts has their open space plan that they were required to file a few years ago. And um, I was working with the Conservation Commission in, the, in Sharon and the Open Space Plan Committee. And we filed a plan and we update it every year. And basically it's to um, remind the community that we do have a lot of open space. Sharon is very fortunate, the people in Sharon, because they do have Moose Hill, they have the trustees of the mm. reservation, they have Borderland, plus the town of Sharon has their own conservation properties. So it's really important to have it because they absorb a lot of water, so we don't have a lot of flooding in our town. Um, we can, um, we have a lot of different wildlife, so it's uh, it's good because it's it supports the community, you know, the bats and the birds and the bees, they, you know, and eating mosquitoes and um, sort of the, the web of life. Mm -hmm. And, um, mm -hmm. and I, I think it's a lot of people really enjoy. I mean, Sharon became uh, an important town because of the sanitarium up on, um, on the uh, community center, and that's where people came from Boston and to heal and to feel better. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so we've got a great, mm -hmm. um, a great resource. And I think it's important that, and, uh, to balance it because we do need a good tax base, but we also need um, open space and places for people to recreate and feel good about themselves and, and have family time and make memories. That's, That's good. Nice. That's a very good observation. Do, do, you, do you ever have uh, where there's uh, people asking you or communities asking you to, to come and well, what's the difference? How can we make uh, like another park saying, uh, do you have like, like I know like banks have uh, group meetings and mm -hmm. these people have group meetings. Do you ever have like group meetings with other state parks? Well, we have a, uh, we belong to a region and oh, region. Um, the oh. Southeastern Mass, South, South District, which goes from Blue Hill all the way out to Nickerson State Park and uh, from Fall River Heritage out to Wampatuck mm. State Park. So we have a large mm. um, region, and then we're broken into districts. So we do have meetings, and we do work together to share equipment and also to um, uh, give each other support with, you know, if someone needs somebody to go and help with a chainsaw or to drop supplies mm. off, we work together a lot. And Massachusetts has, um, you know, a, a significant amount of parks and forests, so. Uh, we have to work together to keep keep everything going. Now, are there any parks that are strictly historical? Or? Well, um, you think of Walden Pond, uh, you think of mm. Henry David Thoreau, that's um, historical but also has a swimming area. So just yeah. about every park is um, his, historic based. 
um, in some way, but uh, some are designated historic sites like Borderland and Maudsley State Park on the North Shore, uh, Walden Pond, um, Mount Greylock. It has just about every park has history, but um, some have more recreation than others. So some like uh, Wild Watson Pond over in Taunton on Bay Road, that's more of a recreation swimming area that's seasonal. And they mm -hmm. have a nice playground and a small beach there for people to swim and this picnic area. So that's a state park. I bet yep. a lot of people don't know that what they're at is a state park. Yep, it's just uh, we have these sort of light green signs and it says um, Department of Conservation and Recreation and it says Borderland State Park. So if you see a state reservation, state park, state beach, we're all in one, um, one bureau and one community. A state park from Massachusetts passed. That's not good for another state, though. Or do they? No, it's just for Massachusetts. Right? How, how about we haven't touched on senior citizens? Isn't there some? Well, there's a discount? senior senior <laughs> pass for uh, any senior over 62 who's a Massachusetts resident. They can contact us, come to the park, and we can issue a free pass for the rest of their life. I think my um, husband has that. What happens yeah. when they lose it? Well, <laughs> we can. Just... We'll we'll look it up, <laughs> and we'll be happy to issue isn't another that, one. But isn't that wonderful? Yeah. I, I can't tell you I've, I've been telling people they don't know mm -hmm. they don't know do, do you ever like work with the schools like you know like send notices out well we have a lot of school groups come in April um, excuse me May and June we had the, just had the Sharon um, I think there were fifth graders here the other day at the park oh, um, they spent nice. the day doing ponding and walking around the gardens and playing ga old-fashioned games like the Ames children would play what's ponding uh, it's mm -hmm. scooping up stuff in the pond and looking at it, like crayfish and bugs and frogs. Really? And putting it under a microscope? Um, we usually <laughs> just, the kids can just look at it, but we do have some nice, um, they're like microscopes, but they're like lenses that mm. you can look through and see the creatures. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you have frog ponds? Our ponds are all full of frogs <laughs> and turtles okay. and fish, and um, we have a lot of, a lot of different things that uh, people can enjoy and, and learn about. Mm. It really is great for, for a small investment. People have access to the beauty of yeah. the natural surroundings and so mm -hmm. many things to offer in, in this setting, activities and things that they can learn. I've heard something about a lifetime pass, a lifetime membership. Um, the f we, we don't have a lifetime membership, but the Federal Parks has also has a senior pass, um, okay. and they have a small charge to the Federal Parks, such as Quincy Adams okay. House or, oh. um, let's see, what else is nearby, the uh, Acadia National Park, the uh, up in Massachusetts, there's a, there's a couple of sites that are more uh, historic, history based. Is Acadia up in Maine? Yeah. On, on yeah. the border? That's Somebody a, told me they were going up there, moving there. Yeah, it's moving. beautiful. Mm. It's a it's a federal park and um, that's really interesting also. I forget who it is. I mm. said, is that Acadia? Uh, and then they said, well, Arcadia. It's not Arcadia, it's Acadia. Arcadia, mm -hmm. with the, a DC. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what's coming up now over the next few years or months? Do you have any longer range plans for things that will be added, or features or attractions at all? Um, we are uh, fairly stable. We are, as I said, we're working on the garden next to the mansion. Um, we also have just finishing up the final uh, work inside the mansion. We spent almost two million dollars on renovations on the roof and repointing oh. the outside. Mm. And we're on our last phase of the inside. We had a little bit of water damage, so in the next few weeks they'll be coming in to finish that and then we'll be um, back open and you know open for tours on a regular basis. What's being done so, on the inside? Um, it's mostly just painting mm -hmm. and doing a little finish up work because nice. um, as I said we had a little paint flakes and mm. things like that just to just to spruce it up so so we're ready to go again for the public because you know you don't really want to show your house off when it being no. dusty or the paint's no. chipping so so no. we're just about ready, and then we'll start out with some school groups, and then we'll be open for public tours. Very nice. Boy, that's that, wonderful. That's really that's uh, wonderful. Do we have any uh, more questions? What do you still have weddings there? We do. Yeah. We have uh, probably about fifty weddings a year, ranging from just couples that and a just of the piece to weddings with two or three hundred people. So they have a lot of fun, and um, they. You know, it's just amazing the different types of weddings, you know, that people have. 
We, we had the hoss and buggies. Oh, your daughter's yeah. was, it was so beautiful. Yeah, it was so beautiful. Hoss, yeah. A lot of people probably yeah. took that. Yeah. The, they had, the, yeah, they had the piano and the music. Oh, yeah. and <laughs> it was just beautiful. <laughs> the, like, I yeah. forgot about the feet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it had to be a certain color. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was so nice. Yeah. It was really, yeah. it was really yeah. beautiful. Yeah, a lot of people used to have their... Uh, Weddings, because it's it, it's so beautiful. It's peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have? Um, you still have the picnics and. Yeah, and we have a lot of picnics. Just about every weekend is booked with um, either a church group or a family picnic or f a lot of uh, family reunions or baby showers or wedding showers. People have them Amazing. as as picnics. And yeah, uh, and even if they have that, there are other pa the place is so big that they can uh, do others. You have mm -hmm. I I don't know if we talked about because we're almost ready for you got to be kidding. The friends group, there mm -hmm. seems to be friends group, there's friends of the library, uh, friends of this and friends of that. You, you have friends. What are the right, friends we have the, the friends of Borderland, they were uh, started even before the park became a park. They helped mm -hmm. uh, make the park uh, open 41 years ago. And they're a, a nonprofit group that has a board of 12 people and they help uh, raise money that they use to spend in the park. They buy all the mutt mitts for the for the dog stuff for the park, and they buy the flowers, and they sponsor the fishing festival, and do uh, they paid really? for half of the garden work. So they do all the little things that the state staff, park staff, or um, just to supplement our budget. And they um, do the um, canine costume parade that's coming up. We always do really? that the Saturday of canine. thanks of uh, Halloween. Mm -hmm. And they do the uh, Blanche James National Art Show, which is opening in September. And we're still taking um, uh, admissions to the art show. People Isn't from all something? over the United States can submit no their canine. artwork. Wow. Do, do you get people from out of, out of the country? So well, they must come too. We have all yeah. sorts of folks. It's it's fun to meet. Um, different families and speaking all different languages and uh, people just coming and uh, either they just discovered it as they were driving by yeah. or it's a destination because oh, I sent um, people they, there. Yeah, people come How there all the time. How many staff? There's just two year-round staff but we do get up to uh, seven of us in the summer. Oh, and, and it's funded by the state? It's the Commonwealth of Mass, yeah. Oh, so you have a certain budget and then the friends like right. supplement. Sure, they'll they'll help out on non-maintenance things like extra flowers or, um, oh, you know, providing worms for the fishing derbies, things like really? that. That you know, we don't really have a place to go buy worms. So. <laughs> you, you dig them up; they're under the leaves. Well, you they have, always you, used to get the. We worms do that under too, <laughs> but, but you know, when you have two hundred children, you yeah. know, it, uh, can, that's can, a lot of worms. Can they get fishing licenses there? Uh, no, you can get them at the town hall. Oh, and also yeah. Walmart, I believe, has yeah, fishing licenses Yeah, they stopped Town now. Hall, believe it or not. Can, yeah. you, can you imagine Walmart and Dick's Sporting Goods? Oh, yeah. yeah, they stopped a few years ago. No. Which, oh. which is, is hunting allowed? No, we don't have any hunting. Oh. Um, there's no motorized vehicle mm. or discharge of firearms in the in Very the park. good. How mm -hmm. about biking? So you can bring your mountain bike, your re regular bike. The um, mountain biking, you pretty much, it's, it's pretty tough. So if you want to just okay. do a three-mile loop, it's for families. They do really nice. They mm. enjoy that. Isn't, isn't that amazing? Yeah. I, 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 hope, I hope people can appreciate. And now, now go. Go out, right. and, go out and, and go to these parks. And for the old people, go get your free pass. You can go. Now, is it is it for them or is it for the car? It's for them. Um, it's just like the driver's license. They have to be in the car, but they don't have to be driving. So if oh, you're, so if you're a senior and you get to the point you you can't drive, you can have someone go with you. What if they're driving a big, giant bus? <laughs> <laughs> and then you can say, you've got to be kidding. <laughs> well, the bu buses are a different fee for parking. Oh, so we have an oh. uh, incremental fee depending on what type of oh, vehicle. And probably group rates, too. Yep. Do, yep. You, do you charge for the kids' classes? Uh, no, we mm -hmm. don't charge for is any it, of our that events. Isn't wonderful? Yeah. Wow. Well, we're going to do our You've Got to Be Kidding. Yeah. Well, who's telling me you've got to be kidding? i got to talk about poor Patrick, got, who's one of the producers and directors here mm -hmm. and he always takes up pictures and he he always like he he said he didn't he didn't like dogs and so he said well why don't you like dogs he says because when I was such an age I got bit by one dog when I was another age I got bit by another dog and when I was here I got bit by another dog the great the greatest guy but we're gonna we have 
Tell them, Camille, about You've Got to Be Kidding. Yes, uh, the Are You Got to Be Kidding is a fun segment of our show where we we have a bag here, a You've Got to Be Kidding bag. Oh, and you know things that are is? very quirky yeah. and weird that that we find out about, either, either reading it or someone will send us something, and we share it with our viewers. And we say, you've got to be kidding. Well, see this? This is a Federal Express thing, yeah. and this is a priority meal. And mm. you know what that? what's that, a check? This is what we talked about on oh, scamming and yes. banks. Mm -hmm. This is somebody sent me a check. I got them two days in a row, one with Federal Express, the next day United States Post Office, which is a federal offense. Yep. And I brought it into the post office, and he says he gets eight to ten of them a day. This is, this is where they want you to cash the check and then send them the, the rest. Mm -hmm. You've got to be kidding. No, I'm serious. This is, this is a you've got to be kidding thing. So, so don't then, cash the check. And then um, I think this this is one which you talked about. I wouldn't read the whole thing, but this is, you know the hotel ads mm -hmm. where, they, where they show you these beautiful pictures or your food where they got these beautiful pictures mm -hmm. on it and then you, you either open it up and they're little things. This is, uh, they did an investigation on hotels. All right. Their ads. Were Hotel phony. ads. A website, oyster.com. Oyster. oyster. Shellfish.com. Mm -hmm. Which seeks to expose the deceptions in hotel advertising. And this s provides hotel reviews by professional inspectors. It, it describes 3,000 hotels. But now it does more. It dramatically exposes the fakery in hotel photographs. It's called the Ho Hotel Tell All and uses the slogan as bait to get you interested. For example, it, ho it posts a photo of a rooftop swimming pool used in the brochure of a particular hotel and then juxtaposes a wider angle view yeah. of the same swimming pool showing it to be flanked and made unpleasant by a mammoth Macy's department store adjoining the hotel. It shows the misleading photo of a largely empty and dreamy hotel beach, and then alongside that, a more revealing and realistic photo of the same crowded and busy beach. Yeah. And it also posts amazingly frank write-ups of many hotels, and um, the size of the hotel, everything that's that's yeah, done. Isn't that it's an expose expose yeah. on hotel mm -hmm. advertising. And of course, yeah. none of us likes to go on a trip which we waited for and saved yeah, for. Yeah, and then it's... And then we get to the hotel and it's a dump. <laughs> or it's yeah. just not what we expect. I know. You find that in Europe and then you're stuck. But you find it around yes. here. So and to that end, we, we yeah. know that, that our viewers will not be disappointed. In fact, our viewers will be very pleased that there is such a wonderful, local, rich resource in this community and in many other communities right. all over. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, we don't have to spend a lot of money to go on a, an enjoyable vacation mm -hmm. with our family. We can do it right nearby, like they used to say, right in your own backyard, practically. Absolutely. And thank you, Ellen. And we thank, thank you, you very much, Ellen, for enlightening yeah. us. It was my pleasure. Thank oh, you so much wonderful. for having me. And, yes. and yeah. remember. Remember, we, we need to hear from you, our viewers, because this show is all about you and what's important to you. So please send us your emails, because remember, this is your show, The Law, Your Money, and, and You. you.